This is Scott with affectivedog.com. Your dog love the ball? Play with them. Don't constantly play fetch. You don't have to tease them constantly with the ball and go, oh, where'd it go? You can play tug. Let me have it, let me have it, let me have it. Let me have it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh. It's always about the interaction with dogs and ball. Unless you've taught a dog to actually totally play fetch. But even then, it's still interaction with you and the ball, right? This is always a way to play with you. So if I'm going to tease her, I'm going to go this way. So it can bounce in different directions. Oh, you got it. Good girl. So instead of going like, I'm going to fake her out. Oh, you're so smart. Because that makes them want to come back. And I don't care about the sit. My mother does. Wow. Throw it in slightly different directions. Because anything you do to make them run harder or bounce faster is an increase in dopamine, increase in adrenaline. And that burst to go get it, and then they start to de stress a little bit. Whoa. So I'll throw it between their legs. Let them try to use that anticipation of where's it going to go. So they can try and predict it, not get psyched out. Oh, you got it. Oh, you got it. It's going to break. Oh, no. Now we're playing tug. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. We've used the ball for a different thing. Now it's not going to bounce. Whoa. So we can let the mistakes happen while you play ball. Oh, is that more fun this way? Oh. See, the dopamine is a seeking system. It's also going to help her spot it in the air and where it's anticipate the bounce so some dogs are really good at this and other ones just anticipate the catch not the movement of the ball oh all right we're gonna do last one this we're gonna go in ready oh no you got it all right here let's do this one. Oh, where'd it go you get it and incorporate cuddling too with your with your when they're starting to wind down. You saw her double. So you hear her panting, and then you saw the gills around her, the lips around her mouth, those folds. I think she's getting tired. I hear it. All right, let's pick up your toys. You want that one? You have that one. I'm gonna take this one and this one. I usually do a last one. You ready? Last one. Woohoo! Good jump. All right, let's go inside. You ready? Can we get some water? I know, I put the water inside. I haven't cleaned out the container. Come on, Roxy. Let's go get some water. There you go. Hold on, let me get your leash. Let me get your leash. Because we're done. When you're at a dog park, hang out with your dog near water. Here it's going to be pretty easy, but if I leave, a lot of dogs will join. If your dog stops and doesn't go back to drinking water, it means you need to go back to him. Thank you, Roxy. A lot of dogs will stop drinking water when you walk away, and i got to clean that. That's all rainwater. So when you're playing ball with a dog, you're interacting with your dog, you don't have to only play fetch. You can just hang out with them, you can play tug. You don't have to throw it long distances to get them tired out. You wanna work on the seeking system, you wanna work on the adrenaline. Watch, adrenaline's gonna make that burst happen. Then watch them, once they get it, they calm down, they're rewarded, and a little bit of serotonin kicks in. And not like we have to keep it there. Serotonin's small amounts. It's supposed to be. It's not released like it is in um, with dopamine or adrenaline. Serotonin's released in small amounts. But they're having fun. That's more endogenous opioids and oxytocin. And then when they start to wind down, it means the endogenous opioids are going away so they can start to recover.
and then you'll start to see them needing water, starting to do pantsing, because that means their body says, a little more work than I thought, and I need to recover. Because believe it or not, when you're still playing, that puts stress on your body. It puts stress on your heart, because you need that adrenaline to make movement and cortisol for, for metabolism. So there's stress. And then when it starts to wind down, good time to stop, good time to cuddle, good time to go hang out with your dogs. That's why we cuddled a little bit. Thank you, Blue. I know, I see you. I'm gonna lay over sit right here. You good? You good? We can let them chew, which increases and dodges opioids. See how tired you really are? Now you're gonna see their real needs. Hi, huh, Blue. Do you need cuddles too? <laughs> Hold on, give me a second. Now two dogs are asking for it. I gotta put the camera down. See how she's putting that chew toy on me? Blue, I got it. Thank you, Roxy. I meant Roxy, I got it. This is Scott with AffectiveDog.com. To learn more about the nervous system, to learn more about emotional, quote, regulation, unquote, understanding how dog's needs are. And you see she's part Border Collie and part, part Malinois or whatever, not Border Collie, cattle dog. But she can still, ow, it's right in the eyeball. That was right in the eyeball. But I got to go let this go. www.affectivedog.com. Think affection. Have a great day.